Hello there, welcome to my tutorial about rock layers in Dwarf Fortress. In this video, I'm going to explain how the underground terrain generation works, how you can identify different areas and rock layers, and most importantly, what you can find in which area of the subterrain. Knowing your way around the rock layers is extremely useful and helps you a lot in determining whether you will like your embarkation point or not. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to talk about what is a rock layer and talk a little bit about the ground rules and then we're going to explore all the different layers and I'm going to talk about what's to be found there. So first of all, what is a rock layer? A rock layer is an area on the ground that's always spanning over a number of elevation levels and it's always following a certain set of rules containing a certain type of stone and a certain amount of different ores and such. So basically it's a template which tells you what can be found in what area. To make it a little bit less obscure, let's explain it to you in one particular example, and that's the topmost area, the soil level. So the soil level follows the following rules. All the walls are made out of either sand, clay, silt, whatever these things are. The soil area always has farmable areas. It always contains no bigger amounts of ore and all those things. So there are certain things that you can rely on when you're digging through the soil level. And once you dig through the soil level enough and hit your first area of stone, you have left one rock layer and entered the next one. And this next layer follows its own rules, different rules, than the soil level. And that's basically how the rock layers work. Also worth mentioning is every elevation level of a rock layer has one dominant type of stone. So we see here it's all made of chalk. We had above us a area which was entirely made of sand. And this means every level has its own dominant type of stone. And usually there's also and information inside of that, what you can find there. So as you see here, we found some bauxite inside the chalk, we found some gemstone, gemstones inside the chalk, and now we know that whenever we see chalk in that biome, these things always count only for your embarkation point, then we have a chance of finding these things inside the chalk as well. And if we go down deeper, here we found claystone with cassiterite, so for this embarkation point, we now know where there's claystone, there's a chance of cassiterite. We found some saltpeter inside there, so that's also a drop that can happen inside there. And these rules, they apply every time to each layer with a certain dominant type of stone. Here's the dominant type of stone is mudstone. We found gold, so we know in this run, mudstone can have gold. And it goes like that, on and on, until you breach deep enough and you leave one rock layer and enter the next rock layer that's following certain other rules. Okay, so much about the theory. Let's get into the actual rock layers. We've already seen the soil la uh, layer, so the soil layer I already also explained. Then we go here. The moment you hit your first stone, you either enter the sedimentary layer or the igneous extrusive layer. They are mutually exclusive. It's either the one or the other. The igneous extrusive layer is an area of volcanic activity. You will find more volcanic rocks there, whereas 80% of the other biomes will be sedimentary, which stands for mud turned into stone one day because it was under enough pressure. That sums up the sedimentary layer enough. We're going to talk about each layer in a second deeper. So when we dig deeper and deeper, we go through the sedimentary layer. Here we have chalk. We have claystone, we have mudstone, we have siltstone, like I said, it's basically mud turned to stone. And after a while, we leave that, we enter granite. This, by the way, doesn't really belong here. So sometimes your rock layers get interrupted by something wild. There is never a guarantee that a biome follows exactly the rules that I'm explaining here. There's always the wild card chance. And when we dig down deep enough, after the sedimentary, comes usually the metamorphic layer. 
The metamorphic layer, here we see quartzite is a typical thing. I'm going to go over the typical stones as well. And when we go deeper after the metamorphic comes, then ultimately here the gap row is the signal. We have entered the igneous intrusive layer, which is the bottommost layer. This is what will come all the way downstairs until we finally hit the magma seas. Okay, so that's your typical layout. It's always like that. Soil, sedimentary or igneous extrusive, then a bit of metamorphic, and then comes the igneous intrusive. That's your basic layout. So what are the specialties of that? So the sedimentary layer, uh, some typical dominant stones there are, like I said already, claystone, limestone, mudstone, rock salt, all those things. And what's really interesting about the sedimentary layer is you either find coal here or you find it nowhere. If there's coal in your embarkation, it's in the sedimentary layers. All the other layers that I have introduced will contain no coal. So if you're looking for coal and once you've breached through the metamorphic layer, you already know that either you have no coal or you have to look harder in your current layers. So that's one thing about the sedimentary. But what's also interesting about the sedimentary, like 80% of all flux stones can be found in the sedimentary. So you also will know whether you can make steel quite easily because most of the iron ores are also found in the sedimentary. So sedimentary contains flux stones, iron and a lot and, and the coal that you will need. So these are the three things that you will be looking for when you're delving through your sedimentary layers. If you notice that there's coal nowhere, well, maybe you want to restart. It's up to you. Also worth mentioning, the sedimentary layer contains low quality gemstones on average. The gemstones in the sedimentary layer are on average the worst of all but you can find a lot of other goodies in there. When it's uh, when we're talking about the igneous intrusive, uh, extrusive, which is the alternative biome, here, well, no coal. But if you happen to have this volcanic environment, which is dominated by basalt, dacite, obsidian, andesite, and rhyolite, you are more likely to find magma, which is way up above the ground. That's an indicator for that. Also, it's quite a good find for all those iron-based ores and you can also find lead up there and aluminum and yeah well that's pretty much it so igneous extrusive is harder unless you know where to find magma okay so let's browse deeper to the metamorphic layer and by the way now that we have already named them all here this is a little bit of an odd thing we have an igneous intrusive layer in between here so that's granite and there's a little bit of uh, diorite these are typical stones that are found actually below the metamorphic usually like i said sometimes it's wild and here we have quartzite which is a typical candidate of the metamorphic layer. The metamorphic layer is dominated by marble, quartzite, phyllite, slate, schist, and gneiss. So these are the typical dominant stones. So if you find one of these, you are in the metamorphic layer. Important to note here is marble. Marble is the only flux stone that can be exclusively found in the metamorphic layer. So if you haven't found any flux stone in your sedimentary, break through the metamorphic and check out if you can find marble there, because if you can't find marble there, chances are you are completely out of flux stone. So here we've had actually some marble here. Also worth mentioning, metamorphic layer does not contain any iron ever. You will find a lot of other ores. I don't want to go into too much detail here, but no iron. And the gemstones of the metamorphic layer are, well, in the middle field. They are more valuable than the sedimentary, but they aren't the most valuable. So the most valuable gemstones are to be found in the igneous intrusive layer, which begins here. So igneous intrusive is a lot easier because it's only three uh, stone types. It's granite, diorite, and gabbro. Three stone types, and they go down lots of Z levels downstairs all the way to the magma sea. 
So, what's to be found in the Igneous Intrusive? The best gems out there, so diamonds and all those things can be found down there. There is also iron to be found down here, so in the form of hematite, but, uh, well, the larger, the really large amounts of iron are to be found in the sedimentary. And here are a couple of interesting things regarding the stone types. So if you are in a Gabbro area, you will find more likely diamonds down there. And it's also worth mentioning that Gabbro contains nickel ore more often. Diorite is not that interesting, except for one Thing, it has a certain bias towards containing gold, and granite has bismuth as a special drop inside there. But beyond that, these are the specialties to be found there. So in a nutshell, let's summarize it. In the sedimentary layers, which are most of the time directly the first layer that you hit, you will be looking for iron, flux stones, and coal. In the metamorphic layers, you will be finding lots of medium quality gemstones and lots of interesting other metals because everything except for iron can be found quite decently in the metamorphic layers, this one here. And when you hit igneous intrusive layers, you gotta be careful about hitting the magma seas one day and you will find the most valuable gemstones and a couple of metals that you will be looking for all over the place but most of the time it's how to put it the igneous intrusive layer is most famous for its gemstones and its surprises at the bottom so once you have left the igneous intrusive and entered the magma sea level you also have entered the area where i don't want to go deeper because i i want to avoid spoilers but i just want to mention there is a layer below igneous intrusive and below the magma seas but that's going to be its own spoiler heavy video so i hope you found that helpful in some way feel free to leave me your comments down below feel free to add in more knowledge if you find that i have missed out something or let me know what you think about the whole topic i'd be down to hear from you also feel free to drop a thumbs up on that video it always helps to make it more visible to everybody else and consider subscribing of course there's daily content coming up from my side and if you like that one chances are you will like the rest as well so check out the playlist link in the description down below there's a link to all the dwarf fortress videos that i made so far tutorial ones that is and a big thanks to all the supporters of this channel. I really, really appreciate. Check out the links down below for supporting this channel as well, if you'd be so kind. And if not, don't worry. Watching this video until this very end and watching through this entire ad block is really amazing. And I'm happy you are still around here. And it helps me a lot. So thanks for watching yet again. Have a wonderful day and see you soon.